Are you searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World. This verse is from Matthew chapter 13. The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. The kingdom of God was the major topic in our Lord's teaching and preaching. Words kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, it's the same thing, occur 122 times in the course of the gospel, and on 90 of those occasions, it is Jesus who speaks them. The kingdom of God was Jesus' dream for the people. It was the subject of most of his parables, nearly all of his teaching. The kingdom of God was the subject of his table talk. It was the reason for many of his uh, actions, miracles, and healings. It was the hot topic of the day, the kingdom of God. Uh, the popular opinion about the kingdom was that it was the land of Israel, that it would become free. It wasn't at that time the kingdom of God, it was part of the kingdom of Rome. And so the dream of most of the people was that they would be able to oust the Romans and the land, Israel, would again become kingdom of God as it had been in the days of David and Solomon. They believed, looking upon ancient prophecies, that God would raise a man, the Messiah, someone inspired and anointed with the Holy Spirit, who would raise an army, who would throw the Romans out of the country. He would then be made king in the temple in Jerusalem. That was the popular view. Jesus' thoughts about the kingdom were totally different. They were more spiritual. But he had to be careful when he preached, preached about the kingdom because the Romans were very aware of opposition to their rule in Palestine. They were quick to get rid of anybody who looked like a revolutionary. And so for most of the time, Jesus spoke in a guarded way through the parables. Great stories, many of them traditional stories, and everybody listening to him could draw a message from them, but not necessarily what Jesus was talking about. The more astute amongst them and his apostles would guess there was something more to them than what Jesus was actually saying. So let's again look at this par parable of the mustard seed. People listening to him speak would think, yes, that's right, uh, mustard seed is the smallest of seeds, and it grows into a big tree and birds come and nest in the branches. And they would be happy with that thought, that the kingdom of God would expand from within, that it had an inner energy, a dynamism. But the others who thought there was more to it would come to Jesus afterwards and he would explain. He would say something like this, don't you remember how Ezekiel spoke of Israel as a tree? and how the birds would come and nest in its branches. And those birds were foreigners, Gentiles, peoples who were not Jews. Now, of course, this idea of non-Jews being part of the kingdom was, was quite foreign to the ordinary people. And also, uh, they were not aware of any inner spiritual meaning. It was all a kind of a political thing for them. And so they uh, kept their ideas and Jesus kept on preaching the kingdom as something spiritual. It's interesting, but Jesus never tells us exactly what the kingdom is. He tells us many things about it, but never defines it. We have to go to Paul for that. And Paul tells us that the kingdom of God consists not in eating and drinking, 
but in righteousness and joy and peace in the, in the Lord, in the Holy Spirit. So in effect, those people are in God's kingdom who are truly loving persons. Only those who truly love God and truly love their neighbour are kingdom people. Being in the kingdom has nothing to do whatever with whatever tradition or religious way we belong to. It has everything to do with being truly loving, truly loving. And so we bear in mind our Lord's words elsewhere, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. By this, all will know that you're my disciples, that you have love one for another. And this love, of course, is in the Greek is agape. It's outward going love, it's concern for the other, it's care. There's nothing of selfishness about it, whatever. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. That is scary because he died for us. I look around the group of people with whom I live in Wellington, New Zealand, and I ask myself, could I die for you or you or you? And honestly, I don't know. I know of plenty of wives who die for their husbands and plenty of husbands who die for their wives and plenty of parents who die for their children. But I don't know whether I die for anyone. So that makes that very scary. I get little joy from the second half of the text. By this shall all know that you are my disciples, that you have love one for another. Well, is it really like that where you live? That Christian Catholics are recognized because they are the people who truly love. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the example you have given us of true love. I thank you that you've called us into your kingdom. Bless us so that we can grow in love of God and love for one another. Let that love be from the heart. Let it be a love that has nothing of selfishness about it, whatever. Let us be truly caring persons, concerned for the other, and not for self. Bless us so that we may become holy even as you yourself are holy. Amen. Shalom World Television is coming to Australia. This is a great gift. It's been gifted to many parts of the world and now it's our Australian turn to receive it with open arms. I welcome it, I bless it, it's going to really support family life, married life, youth. Give us a resource that uh, we know that uh, we need really help in the, great help in these areas. May Almighty God bless this new resource coming to our land in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit.